this segment, I want to show you how to create simple visualizations without using Pivot with just using SPL. So again, using our homework data, and let's think about another visualization that we might want on our dashboard. And over on the Field Explorer, I'm going to pick out some interesting fields that might be meaningful to us or to our stakeholders. For this one, let's look at user. And we have a bunch of different usernames. So that could be good. Let's include user in our search. And we want to include all the usernames. To keep it simple, we might just want to know how many users are in each state. So state has all the two-letter postal abbreviations for states in the United States. So let's also include the field state. We'll query every single state. So our host is homework data, our user is every user, and our state is every state. Now to make this look more organized, we're going to use a technique that we used earlier in the course, where I'm just going to create a simple table with user and state. This will make the data look more organized, and it will also show us only the data that we want. So we have user and state. Now there are a finite number of states. There are not a finite number of users. There could be any number of usernames. So chances are, since there are 2,000 rows, there are some states with more than one user. So let's say we want to make a column chart that shows states on the x axis and a count of users on the y axis, and you can sort of envision that in your head. And there are two main ways to make a chart using SPL, and they are to either use the command chart or time chart. The time chart command automatically builds a chart based on time. Time goes on the x-axis and you can't change that with the time chart command. But remember, I wanted the x-axis to be each state. So we can't use time chart, we'll have to use the regular chart command. And chart has some of the same functionality that the stats command has. And we did, we checked out the stats command earlier in the course. So what I really want to do, I want the count of number of users by state. So I'm going to do count and then field. And the field we want is um, user. We want number of users. And we'll simply say by state. Okay, now this is a nice statistical table of each state and the number of users for each state. And if we click on the visualization tab, we should already have a recommended visualization and it is a column chart just like we wanted. So now we can see each individual state. We can hover over it and see the number of users. We can also look at the Y axis for, for the number of users as well. Let's say that this count parentheses USR, this is pretty cryptic in our, in our CEO or whomever our stakeholders are, want a different name for the Y axis. It's very easy. We can just pipe to rename count USR as number of users. And remember, we are putting number of users in quotes because it is a phrase. It has spaces in it. They are not individual keywords. Run the search again. And here we have the legend, number of users, number of users on the y-axis, and each individual state. So let's add this visualization to our existing dashboard. We'll save as a dashboard panel, existing homework, Panel title will be count of users by state. 
and don't view the dashboard yet, we're not quite done. To show you the time chart command, I'm going to go back to our core search. Now for time chart, let's think about something that we might want to record or visualize over time. And let's say maybe we want the average time it took to, to do a backup. So average backup duration by domain. That could be good. So let's bring in backup duration and domain. Wild cards to each because we're, we don't care which backup duration and which domain it is. We're going to be charting those over time. We'll simply pipe that to time chart and it has a lot of the same format as stats or regular charts. So we actually need to do average of backup duration by domain. Let's see what that gives us. Okay, so the time chart command split the columns by domain. We have all of our domains listed there and the date it looks like by day. And let's see what Splunk recommends for a visualization for this. Okay, so this looks interesting. We have color by domain name. We have the date on the x-axis and the average hours that it took to do a backup on that domain in theory. We can add this as is to our dashboard but let's see what we can do with the format because we might be able to do something more interesting like a stacked chart where it will show each day it will still color by domain but it will stack them and this will allow us to see proportionally which is taking longer. The other way we can do it is stacked 100%, which will show us real proportions, percentages, based on a total number of 100%. So this could be an interesting chart. So let's add that to our existing dashboard called homework, and we'll say average backup duration by domain for our panel title. Okay, and let's edit the, the dashboard panels, and let's drag this one up here. And now we've got a really nifty looking dashboard, and if this were real data, it could actually be useful to an IT operations environment. I hope you've enjoyed working with visualizations. I recommend you practice these as much as you possibly can and learn everything you can about SPL and Splunk visualizations. It's really the core of Splunk. As always, I thank you for joining me, and I'll see you in the next segment. Welcome back. In this segment, I want to talk about reporting and alerting in Splunk. Reports and alerts are knowledge objects in Splunk. To create reports and alerts in Splunk, you need the enterprise license. So. Once your license moves over into free, it disables these two features. Reports are nothing more than saved searches that can run on a schedule and perform an action. Some of the actions are send an email to report consumers. These could be CEOs or anybody that would need these reports. You can embed them on a web page. You can use them for dashboard panels, or you can run a script. You can schedule reports to run every hour, day, week, month, or on a cron schedule that you define. And you can stagger the report running window. So if you have several reports running at the same time every day, say 8 a.m., and it's consuming a bunch of Splunk resources, you can stagger when the reports are being run. And next up, I want to talk about alerts. Alerts are very similar to reports. They can be scheduled or they can be set in real time. And an alert is really 
something that's triggered when results of a search meet a specific condition that you define. So for example, if I want to see user authentication fail failures on a certain firewall, and I tell Splunk to monitor that in real time, and if it returns anything, trigger an alert. And once you trigger an alert, you have to give it an action. And an action could be send an email, trigger a script, use a webhook, um, list in Splunk triggered alerts. So you can just go to the Splunk triggered alerts page and it will show all the triggered alerts. And use an external app like PagerDuty or Slack, which turns out to be very, very helpful. So let's take a look at reporting and alerting in Splunk. And I'm going to move over to my Splunk instance that has an enterprise license. And for this, I'm going to use the Splunk internal index. And I'm going to create a search with some interesting fields here. It looks like there's a log level, so let's choose uh, log level error. And we're simply going to go up here to save as and choose alert. And let's just name it test alert. Here's where we would put a description like this alert triggers if any error log levels come through. And we can have it private or shared in the app. I like to do shared in the app. And we can choose scheduled or real time. If we choose real time, it takes away all that scheduling information. If we use scheduled, we can, as I said, every hour, day, week, month, or run on a cron schedule. So right now, let's say real time and trigger alert when we have peer result, number of results, number of hosts, number of sources, and custom. So let's do number of results is greater than zero in one minute and trigger once and then we can do a bunch of actions here. Log event, pager duty, which I have attached to my enterprise Splunk instance, run a script, send an email, webhook, so I'm not really going to build this alert because it will probably alert me and this is an enterprise production system. Now let's say we wanted to create a report. We'll do the same thing. We'll choose save as and then choose report. And we'll just name it test. And reports can have time range pickers built into them. And that's fine. We can do that. And after we save the report, we can choose to embed it. This is embedding it in an HTML website. We can schedule it. We can give it different permissions. If we click on schedule, we have the same scheduling options as the alerts. And here's where we can choose a schedule window. If we have a bunch of alerts running at the same time every day, we might choose a different window for each one, and therefore it won't utilizes many Splunk resources. And as always, I thank you for joining me in this section, and I look forward to seeing you in the next section.